All right, it's time for another math easy solution. Today uh, we're going to discuss, basically, I'm going to go over an example on the precise definition of one side limits. I went over this uh, in my earlier video. I'm just going to recap quickly. Basically, the precise definition of a left-hand limit, just a uh, limit as x approaches a from the left side. That's why you put this negative of, of f of x equals to l if for every number epsilon, which is greater than zero, there's a number delta, which is greater than zero, such that the difference between fx and, and the limit, or fx minus limit, is less than uh, epsilon whenever uh, x is uh, basically between a and a minus delta here. This is just going to be a small number greater than zero, so you're just really close to this a, but from the left side. And then similarly similarly to the um, the right hand limit, the precise definition, the exact same thing as, as above, but now we have this plus side, so you're approaching from the right side. And basically the same uh, if for every epsilon uh, again same thing except now you're from the right side so x is greater than a so on the right side of it but less than a plus delta this is a small number so it's just really close to it you could uh, see my uh, video on it uh, in my earlier video in a video link below for more information on this I'm not gonna go over it too much okay so now uh, this example I'm gonna go over is basically it says prove that the limit as x approaches 0 from the plus side or the right side of square root x equals to zero here so to prove it we'll just use this definition of all well, the right side right hand side because we're dealing with a plus here so we're going from the right side and in this case we're going to have l is equal to zero that's this one right here and our a is going to be just equal to zero right here so now we have if we just so we just have to prove these uh this, this little uh, scenario right here so we need to get this we need to basically find a, a number delta here for any yeah, basically for every number epsilon we just need we need a number delta here so we got to find this delta because this one's going to be anything there and we're and basically like in my earlier videos on proving it we're just going to find this in terms of this epsilon so now if you just write this down it's going to be square root x is the f of x minus well zero is less than epsilon whenever yeah whenever now a is zero so we just put zero less than x less than this is going to be zero plus this uh, delta right here or zero less than x less than uh, uh, delta right here and this one we'll just simplify this is going to be square root x is less than epsilon and basically I'll write this one ever here so basically whenever we have this scenario we need to prove that it's this one right here and this uh, this absolute value the square root since uh, real numbers it's going to be has to be positive inside and we're approaching from the right side right here so this, this is always going to be positive so we're going to have square root x is less than uh, epsilon right here we can take the absolute values because it's going to be positive regardless and now if we square root both sides so then this is going to be well square x square root less than this is going to be squared right here as uh, square root and then i mean square both sides not square root so now we're going to just get, get this one's going to cancel it's going to be less than epsilon squared and basically we can just write this whenever we have the same case as above here and, and now this one suggests if x is less than uh, than epsilon uh, squared, then this is basically saying this this epsilon squared is equal to our delta right here because x is less than both of them there. Yeah, so now what we could write this now as the same definition above square root x minus zero, or the L is less than epsilon whenever, yeah, whenever we have this zero is less than x less than, now, now we're going to have this Del I mean uh, delta I mean epsilon squared right here so now this basically like I said in my early video so now so if we make this really really small let's say point zero 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 two etc then we're gonna have this delta which equals to epsilon squared really 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 small here and if you looked at yeah when we look at this th this graph right here if if this is zero which is the limit here now this Epsilon is going to be distance from here. If we pick it really, really small, then this one we're just going to square it. And if it's less than less than one, if when you square it, it's actually gets smaller. So we're going to get closer and closer. Here. So if we pick this, going to if this is the epsilon, then it's going to get smaller and smaller here. So this just means now we can pick it any like however small we want, so as long as it's greater than zero. And so all the way up to here, etc. And then this is going to be smaller and smaller, or approaching this limit right here. And I, like I showed in my earlier videos on the precise definition of a limit, this proves that, yeah, this basically proves that the limit is uh, zero right here. So this is our proof. And I'll just write it down right, right up here. This proves basically limit x approaches zero from the right side of the positive side of square root x 
is equal to zero. And you can see this from this image. And this one, because we know this delta here. That's all we have to do is basically find this delta, and it's going to be epsilon squared right here. Well, that's all for today. Hopefully you uh, learned from this uh, quick example. And remember, you can download these notes in the Dropbox link below. And yeah, stay tuned for another math easy solution.